three, two, one. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Vicente, and today we're gonna tackle that age old question, loan versus lease. Now this question bubbles up to the surface every once in a while and people ask me, what's the right move? What should I do? And the answer, it's never as simple as you would think because a lot of it comes down to personal preference. Are you the type of person that gets bored with your car after six months and are ready for a new one? Do you constantly yearn for that newer model year after year after year? What are your savings habits like? You know, your typical ones, not just when you're looking to buy a new car. Yep, that all comes into play. Current economic times, incentives, rates, terms. All of these things come in to making that decision at that moment in time. Disclaimer time. Everything we discussed today is current as of today. Do your homework when you have to make this decision on your own. Remember, the incentives are always changing and so you want to look into those as they'll heavily weigh whether the numbers pencil out towards a lease or towards a loan. Current economic times, both individually and as a whole, are also going to come into play there. Depreciation numbers. Sure, we can take a look at average depreciation now and what's forecasted over the next five or six years, which we will do, but that's a constantly changing number as well. So this is based on the best information I could find on the internet now. So again, this is not me telling you the right answer to the question for you. We're just using general terms here to help you make an educated choice when the time comes. So leases have become increasingly popular over the years. And the main reason for that is the increased cost for these vehicles. They're getting astronomically high. And because of that, if you're going to purchase these cars, your monthly payment is going to get astronomically high. And leases offer you something you can't replicate in a loan, and that is a low monthly cost. But there's a lot of factors that come into that and we're gonna go over those now. Now, another reason to keep in the back of your mind why leases are so attractive is it benefits the manufacturers. See, there's two reasons why. One, it keeps new inventory flowing out the door. We come in, we lease, two and a half years later, three years later, we bring that car back to the dealership and the dealership now has an opportunity to move another new unit off the floor into your hands. Keeping that cycle going, obviously benefits the manufacturers. The second one is a constant and predictable stream of used vehicles to the market. What this does is it gives you a constant and reliable rate of depreciation. It also controls that rate of depreciation. See, if it wasn't for a constant stream, you could have spikes in used car volumes forcing the depreciation. Or you could have lulls where there isn't a used car inventory causing the reverse and a higher demand, lower volume, increased prices, slowing that depreciation curve. All of this benefits the manufacturer to have leases on the table. It's one of the big reasons why it's become so popular aside from those growing prices. Guys, at the end of this video, I'm gonna jump into numbers and actually take a look at a car for sale right now. But before we get, go there, I wanna compare these two models, loan and lease, and some kind of generic terms that are thrown around a lot that maybe you haven't thought all the way through. Obviously, if you take a loan on the vehicle, you are the owner. Ownership is in your hands to do with the vehicle whatever you want. If you do a lease, however, I want you to think of a lease as like a long-term rental. It's really not your car. For all intents and purposes, these equal the same. Kind of. See, in a loan, that down payment is taken off the amount you owe or the amount you paid for that vehicle, including all fees, taxes, and licensing. On a lease, this is not the case. Upfront cost is simply the cost associated with transferring that vehicle. Taxes, licensing, fees. If you go loan route, you own the vehicle. Drive it as much as you want. If you go with a lease, Oftentimes manufacturers will put mileage restrictions on that vehicle to retain some of its value in the future when they flip it again. So can you drive that vehicle under those mileage restrictions each year? If not, there's usually a pretty severe penalty on the back end. 10,000 miles a year, 11,000 miles a year, 12,000 miles a year. Now you can negotiate leases for much higher limits, but understand you're going to affect your payment enormously. 
Now this one can be a little controversial. And the reason I say that is because what you think is excessive wear and tear may not be what the dealer thinks is excessive wear and tear. Yes, you can find language in the contract that tells you what this is, but under most circumstances, that can be argued one way or the other. And I cannot tell you enough how many times this comes into play when somebody returns their lease that they are hit with some fee for excessive wear and tear when they thought they were no different than anybody else in how they treated their car. Disclaimer time. Also here, take into consideration kind of human nature. The car's not yours. You're probably not gonna treat it as nicely as you would if you did a loan and the car was yours in the end. Something to consider. You, you can't really customize a lease vehicle. You can probably get the windows tinted and things along those lines, but again, you're running really close to that excessive wear and tear and whether they can sell that car for its estimated value at the end. If they can't, there's probably fees for you to bring that car back up to its standard and to remove all the customizations you did. Customizations can bite you in the rear end. And so typically on leases, you just don't do them. Own that car, take a loan, go to town and do what you want. Is it a 12 month lease, a 24 month lease, 36 month lease? Whatever that is, that's what you're locked into and that's when you're gonna get your new car. Can you get out of those leases? Yes. Is it as easy as you think? No, and usually there's some sort of penalty that comes along with trying to get out of that lease before the lease ends. Now, if you have a loan, you can sell that car any day you want. Of course, you're gonna have to take the loss on it. Depreciation is gonna come into play. We're gonna talk about that next. But you can get a new car at any point, any time during your life of owning that vehicle. Now, if you own the car and you take a loan, this really doesn't apply to you. However, if you do a lease, this is going to come into play for you because it's actually going to be the amount you pay for. Whatever the car is worth today sitting on the lot versus what they anticipate that car to be worth when you return it. That difference there, that's the amount you're paying plus interest. We all know cars depreciate the moment you buy them. As soon as you sign on the dotted line, the car is instantaneously worth less than it was five minutes prior. And a car's depreciation curve often looks like this. While the y-axis is the value and the x is time. And if you look closely, you can see it's a pretty steep curve for the first few years. Better yet, let me show you an example. Okay guys, so to better illustrate depreciation, I want you to think of this cup as being your car. And this coffee as being the value of your car. When you go onto a dealership, this is the value of your car. Now over the course of the next three years, this is the value of your car. Now does your car stop depreciating simply because it's three years old? No. But the depreciation curve after three years starts to look like this. It's just a slow trickle. And you lose the benefit of this value over the long term when you go a lease because you're paying for it all up front. The reason why I want you to focus in on depreciation is because it's going to come into play over the long term. Again, if you're a person who gets antsy for a new car every six months, you probably are gonna have a very different scenario. But if you don't, if you are somebody that looks at owning these leases for three years and are content just getting a new model because it's easier for you or more convenient, I want you to really pay attention to this depreciation. And the reason for that is if you are only paying the difference from today's value to future value, with a depreciation curve like that, you're paying the steepest portion of the depreciation and you're not seeing the benefits of long-term ownership. Disclaimer time, do your homework. These numbers that we're about to show are as of today and are used as an example. We can always negotiate price, you can always negotiate financing, you can always negotiate terms. So the numbers here are fairly generic and if you haven't watched my negotiation video, I suggest you do that now. 
because we're gonna talk about MSRP and in that video, I tell you to ignore MSRP all the time. The reason we're doing that is it just makes these numbers simple. So we are gonna take a look at purchasing a 2020 Ford Mustang at MSRP. Cost is going to be the same for this at $27,115. Term, we're gonna do a 72 month term. And the reason for that is Ford right now is offering 0% for 72 months. On top of that, Ford is offering to pay for three months of your payments plus defer three. We're gonna factor all that into the loan. Again, like I said, if you're watching this video six months from now, do your homework with current incentives and current rates because it will change. We are also going to take Ford's advertised lease deal on the same Mustang. Let's take a look. After six years, two leases, one loan, which one pencils out? Okay guys, so for the loan, we're gonna put a down payment of $2,787 at 0% for 72 months, and our monthly payment is going to be $349. For the lease, we have a few more details to cover here as they'll come into play that don't come into play on the loan. You're gonna have a 10,500 annual mile restriction, which means you cannot go over 10,500 miles a year. If you're a big driver, you're already out. The other one is the term, which is 39 months, not 36, but 39. Why? I think Ford just wanted to throw a curveball into this scenario. So we're gonna do this times two, assuming that we'll get the same lease deal three years from now when you have to turn this car in. Again, just for easy math. Obviously incentives will be different, but for easy math, we're gonna say we are. So on the lease, your upfront cost is gonna be $3,093, and your monthly is gonna be $306. So as you can see, you're saving about $43 a month going with the lease. Now that's gonna add up over these six years. So let's take a look at these six years as a total. So at the end of these two lease periods, the total cost to you is $28,212. The value you still have in that car is zero because you no longer own the vehicle. Remember on this loan, it was 0% for 72 months. And on top of that, Ford made three payments for you. So the cost of the vehicle by going loan cost you $26,868. The projected equity in your car, $13,557. Not only did it cost you less over six years, you have $13,000 in equity that you can flip for your next car. Right now, these current economic times, with the rates and incentives they are offering you every day of the week, a loan is going to pencil out as a benefit to your pocket. Are you the type of person that can hold a car for six years? Only you can answer that. But you can do this math for any term you want. But the question is never as simple as you think it might be. Right now, these current times, I'm willing to bet you a loan is going to win every day of the week. And guys, that's it. Hopefully this helps you in the next time you buy a car. And maybe we do this every six months. So we take a look at what the current incentives are in the market and we run another comparison. That way you're always in the know. Let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna see. Otherwise guys, I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, smash that thumbs up button. And if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe down below. And that little bell icon, click that too. That way you're notified the next time I upload a video. I'll see ya. If you made it this far, I'm gonna bring something else up. And that is something I mentioned earlier in the video. And that was what kind of savings do you typically do? Now, the reason I bring this up is because under normal times when incentives aren't quite as great as they are right now, you see a larger difference between what you're gonna pay in a loan versus what you're gonna pay in a lease. Now on a lease, if you can save $100 a month or $150 a month, and you're a good saver, meaning you can take that additional 150 that you're reducing off of your payment and save that or invest it yourself over those three or four years, this is going to vastly change these numbers and a lease may be in your best option. Right now, however, those incentives are insane and they're driving your total cost of ownership on these vehicles through the floor. If you're looking to buy a car now, a loan wins every day. In the future, only you can do the math.